are many paths that are open up once we cross the limit of uh, human existence the various para human lineages then diverge into a variety of uh, evolutionary paths we cannot speak of all of them but i am going to skip some of the levels of evolution and we'll talk about some about which we know from the great masters one level above the para human are the liberated tendencies where this causal body has fulfilled enough desires and is at a level of awareness which is a hyper aware level such a being would be called a liberated being it is not that uh, there is no form at all it is not that they are not found in this world but they are of a different kind it is possible to skip the para human stages and arrive directly at the liberated stage by following a proper spiritual lifestyle there can be both human and non human or para human liberated entities and if we take a look at their behavior we'll find that they are free from actions they act without acting and whatever they do is an expression of the universal memory there is hardly an individual left there the individual appears whenever it is required otherwise they are in a absorbed state most of the time another remarkable thing about the liberated people is that they do not look like anything special they look like an ordinary person doing ordinary things it seems that they have the ordinary faults and ordinary qualities just simple intelligence and they are totally egoless they are mostly dedicated to serving other people and probably that's why they are alive in a human form or any other form otherwise there was no need or they are simply burning their remaining tendencies they are not here for a long time they have a very steady intellect and they know exactly what to do they actually know what will happen how it will happen they do not speak much it is unnecessary for them to speak they will speak only if you ask them some questions or or only when it becomes very necessary their speech is very sweet and is full of wisdom otherwise they are very very silent most of the time away from society and people their thought has been replaced by awareness there is no thought there is no need of thought and they are in a absorbed state we have talked about this state in earlier episodes it is a non individuated state in which the difference between the perceived and the perceiver is gone sometimes the thoughts happen sometimes the emotions happen but they are seen as natural phenomena not as my thoughts or my emotions they are like rain and wind and they happen in the absorbed state in complete awareness and sometimes extraordinary experiences can happen and these people they do not take responsibility of it they will never say that i did it or i came to know the future or something like this they say it happened which is the truth it simply happens the individual does not do anything the individual is a result of doing something which is always universal doing they have no relations and they don't pretend to be related to anybody their only relation is of oneness i am you and you are me who needs relations all relations are fake the oneness is the only true relation that is what they are displaying for them the entertainment is meaningless because they are always blissful probably they are entertained when there is no activity when there is nothing to do when all they do is sit silently that is the best entertainment everything else is a distraction and probably the ordinary people with huge egos they will never understand this bliss is my nature and so i don't need anything to be blissful and if anything happens it can only disturb this bliss these tendencies look like the tendencies of a spiritual person but there is a major difference which is that liberated people do not have any mental afflictions not even a tiny bit it is kind of impossible to have an affliction if there is no mind 
whatever the mind does is an execution of its tendencies which have been now purified totally there are no suggested paths for a liberated person because they are already at their destination it will be kind of uh, difficult for me to describe these tendencies in detail so i went through them very quickly and there are very few examples of such people i did not get a lot of chance to observe them carefully and it is possible that we mistake for highly advanced spiritual people as liberated people we are unable to see any differences and so there is a chance of uh, wrong evaluation here and we should be very careful so now remains only one level which is probably equal to the liberated tendencies but i have given it its own level this last level resembles a lot the liberated tendencies and it is probably unjust to call it a higher level compared to the liberated one but there is a major difference which makes it a special level and it is now our opinion where do we want to place it i placed it above the liberated tendencies the liberated causal body gets absorbed in the universal memory and we don't know after that what happens to it but it is no more an individual now and it never becomes an individual that is what the accepted uh, theories are i'm going to add a dimension here that uh, there are some liberated entities that do not absorb completely they leave just one tendency there just one desire there which operates forever that desire is to liberate everybody and therefore i am going to call it the bodhisattva tendencies you can place them a bit higher than the absorbed liberated and here also i do not know much to talk so i am going to give you a very quick overview of what can be the bodhisattva tendencies my own experience is next to nothing about this so i won't be able to provide you with a lot of detail these totally liberated entities they appear in various worlds various universes in various forms with an intention to spread the light it is already happening but uh, these bodhisattvas when they see that it is already happening they decide to do it intentionally because they see it as the greatest of the event in the universal memory what can be greater than enlightening others nothing is greater than that no action is bigger than that so they take a form as per the need they set up a behavior as per their agenda and you will find that whatever they do whatever they say even their looks and everything about them is a teaching their all actions are teachings and they become the great masters sometimes they are not famous becoming famous is not a condition for becoming great master some sometimes their actions are well hidden they work in the backstage sometimes they are dramatic and sometimes they are so obvious and so loud their actions are so grand that we have a special name for them such bodhisattvas and we call them the avatars when they arrive here they cause a change in the whole era they cause uh, the whole universe to shift upwards they also cause a lot of destruction they also cause a lot of deaths and they also liberate a lot of people they set up the wheel rolling with so much energy that it goes on for many thousand years the others are not so dramatic and they prefer to come again and again every 100 200 300 years probably and do minor corrections here and there or simply teach the people at a personal level one person at a time their mode of operation i have no clue about it there can be many ways they will do whatever is needed they will kill yes and they will get killed they will accept being murdered by ordinary people if it becomes a teaching they will do it it is like a child's play for them 
ordinary people usually do not understand the actions of a bodhisattva some people they understand them only after few hundred years of their their death and some people understand them only after many thousand years when they speak every word is a teaching i need not say more than that instead of thoughts they have complete awareness the thoughts are completely unnecessary it is just a unnecessary activity thinking is not going to teach anybody anything so probably it does not happen their relations with people are of oneness although people are going to call them as teachers as gurus but from their point of view everybody is guru there is no student they will do this job of guru if that is what is given to them and they form a relation of guru and disciple this relation cannot be broken because the bodhisattvas are forever once you join a spiritual path and come across an enlightened being your relation is now permanent it is eternal you and the one you are related to are eternal other relations they are momentary because they are between objects that are momentary for them the whole existence is a play the world is a playground whatever they do here is mostly entertainment it is the leela they know that everybody is actually already liberated there is really no need to teach there is no need to tell people that you need to evolve and you need to evolve faster there is really no need to do that knowing that the true nature of everybody is already complete emptiness eternal infinite timeless free of qualities free of defects isn't that a stupidity to try to fix it it is already fixed it is already as complete and whole as it can be knowing this fully they do it they shine the gold so that it shines even more they polish the diamond so that it becomes even more beautiful they are not in a hurry it is a play they are never seen in a hurry it is not that i have taken this birth now i need to liberate 20000 people there is no target here whatever happens happens they already know it probably some may seem to be very very serious about it but that seriousness is also a part of the play nobody can be liberated because there is nobody it can only be a play and that's what they are doing they are playing that's why i put them above the liberated tendencies because this is what the whole universal memory is doing this is what the whole of the manifested existence is doing it is playing can there be anything higher than that there can be a difference of opinion here that it is a meaningless play so i am going to go and dissolve i am going to give up the individuality forever i don't have this even the tiniest desire to liberate anybody which you call the biggest desire it is not biggest it is the biggest joke nobody is bound your playing is also a joke and so there can be a difference of opinion and therefore some of the liberated ones they may not like to do this play of bodhisattvas and i see no difference in this play or no play they are equal i see no justification to choose one over the other it is a really hard decision to put one level over the other you can say they are same only the names are different this they are seemingly different but they are same and then i have this strange theory that the liberated ones they are never really dissolved they <laughs> never really go away they become the substance of the universe they add to the already infinite light that is here and the tendencies they, they also never go away really the memory is never destroyed the memory itself is timeless everything remains as it is that memory resurfaces in the form of many universes many creatures many entities if that is what you mean by liberated then it's not really dissolution it is a seed for the next level of play 
That's why sometimes I say that we get causal bodies which are already formatted for a new life. Hardly anything appears out of blank canvas because of these liberated entities. They are there in every speck of dirt. In the tiniest bit and bite of the sea of information, they are there. Just like the drop when it falls back into the ocean becomes the ocean and the drop is now everywhere in the ocean. It has become infinite but it has also become so thin that it is almost invisible. We say that it is dissolved but it is there. The ocean is forming new drops which contain the particles of that drop. How can anybody be dissolved? Knowing this, Bodhisattvas, they keep a drop alive. That gave me enough confidence to place them above the liberated. But you can see that the liberated ones are doing even a bigger dance. So it's really a matter of perspective. If you did not know that there is no dissolution, then probably you will say that the liberated ones are equal to Bodhisattvas. And if you have this firm belief that dissolution means nothing remains, then you will say that the Bodhisattvas are above the liberated, above the dissolved. We cannot talk about the mental afflictions here because there are none. Bodhisattvas are the one who show us the path. They suggest us the path. They create the path. Without them, there is nothing. Without them, there is blind evolution from nothing to nothing. Their substance permeates the whole universal memory and appears as the guru field, out of which the drops of nectar, the drip into the lower layers and lower beings, such as the humans. Without them, there, is, there will be nothing but darkness, the darkness of the illusion.